Hello and welcome everyone to today's presentation on SLUM. SLUM is a job scheduler that plays a crucial role in high performance computing. In this world of complex calculation and managing resource effectively, SLUM is a valuable tool. Today we will deep dive into the capabilities and its importance to see how SLUM is important to us, which helps us to manage and organize compute tasks in larger scale. Let's explore how SLUM simplifies the process of distributing and optimizing computational workload. Today we will learn what are workload managers and then SLUM. We introduce the SLUM. We see modes of program execution. Then we see SLUM command. Then we write some samples from job script. Then we see how to monitor slum job the first one is workload managers so workload managers allow user to submit their job or task to the system they manage the job queue prioritize job based on user defined policies and handle job dependencies in a large compute system where multiple users or group share the same computing resources a system is needed to allocate and manage these shared resources efficiently. This is typically done using a workload manager or a job scheduler. Sometimes situation arises when the demand for computing resources exceed the available capacity in a given compute system. It often occurs in scenario where there are numerous users or application competing for limited resources. Certainly, in a distributed computing system, workload management is typically handled by two components that is, a resource manager and a job scheduler. The resource manager is responsible for monitoring the availability and load of computing resources within a cluster or distributed system. Its primary goal is to efficiently manage and allocate the available resources to various tasks or jobs. So here are the key functions of a resource manager. The first one is node monitoring, manages CPU, network, disk, memory, etc. The job scheduler. The job scheduler work closely with the resource manager to schedule and manage the execution of tasks or jobs on the available computing resources. Its main purpose is to efficiently allocate resources based on job priorities, dependencies, and other criteria. Here are the primary function of a job scheduler. That is job function, job submission, queuing, and job priorities. So the workload manager receives job submission from user along with their resources, requirement, prioritize, and other specification. It maintains a queue of pending jobs and schedule them for execution based on predefined policies or rule. The system aims to maximize resource utilization, ensure fairness, and prioritize jobs based on their importance or urgency. Overall, managing a situation where there is more compute work than available resources require careful resource allocation, job prioritization, and efficient scheduling strategies to ensure fair and optimal uses of the shared resources. The workload manager plays a critical role in achieving these goals. Now let's us see the factors for determining which job get run. So it depends on current system load, it's submitting user fair share users, submitted jobs, requested resources. These factors play a crucial role in optimizing resource allocation, maintaining fairness, and ensuring efficient job scheduling in a computing system. Now we will see what are the type of workload managers are available. So here are the several solutions available to address the challenge at hand. The first one is PBS, that is known as the portable best system. It is a solution that offers users the ability to manage and schedule bad job 
efficiently. Another solution is the simple Linux utility for resource management or SLUM. It is designed especially for Linux cluster and provide a powerful set of tools for job scheduling and resource allocation. SLUM is known for its scalability and reliability, which making it a popular choice in the scientific and academic communities. Then the third one is MOB. MOB is another option that offer advanced workload management capabilities, which is developed by adapting computing. Then next one is Univa Grid Engine. It is formerly known as Sun Grid Engine. It is a widely adopted solution for managing distributed computing workload. Then the fifth one is Load Leveler. Load Leveler and Condor are the two additional solution worth considering. Load Leveler is developed by IBM. It offers workload management capabilities for distributed comp computing environment, while Condor focuses on providing a high throughput computing solution. The sixth one is OpenLava. OpenLava is a workload management system which is developed by Adaptive Computing. Lastly, IBM platform LSF that is known as Load Sharing Facility. It is a comprehensive workload management solution that offers advanced jobs, scheduling, resource management, and monitoring capabilities. But in our HPC, we cluster, we prefer. Now we'll see what is SLUM. The simple Linux utility for resource management. It is an open source cluster management and job scheduling system. It provides a comprehensive set of tools and features to efficiently allocate and manage computing resource in a cluster environment. One of SLUM key functionality is it is serving as both a resource manager and a job scheduler. As a resource manager, SLUM keep tracks of available resources in the cluster, such as CPU, cores, memory, and GPU. It provides a centralized view of the cluster resource utilization, allowing administrators to efficiently allocate resources to different jobs and users. As a job scheduler, SLUM handles the submission, queuing, and prioritization of jobs in the cluster. Users can submit their computational task to SLUM, specifying their resource requirement and any other job specific parameter. SLUM then manages the job queue, schedule jobs execution based on various policies and track their progress. For comprehensive information uh, on SLUM feature configuration or option and uses, there is an official document provided by SEDMD. It is a valuable resource. The documentation covers various topics, including installation guide, user, an administrator manual and advanced configuration setting and troubleshooting assistant. So user can refer to the official SLUM documentation at the following link. Now we will see some terminology which are used. Within the SLUM cluster management and job scheduling system, there are several key terminologies that play an important role in managing and executing job. The first one is what is job? In SLUM, a job refers to a computational task or set of command which is submitted by a user which is to be executed on the cluster. It can include various parameters such as resource requirement, job dependency, and a specific command to run. The second one is partition. A partition in SLUM represents a logical division of the cluster resources. It acts as a separate execution environment with its own set of resources, limit, and access control. Partition help in organizing and managing different type of workload or user group within the cluster. The third one is QoS, that is quality of service. QoS in SLUM refers to the ability to define a spatial limit or priorities for a specific partition or user. It allows administrator to assign different level of service or resource allocation to different job or user group based on their requirement or priorities. QS setting help ensure fair resources distribution and optimize job scheduling based on a specific criteria. Let's see what are the modes of program execution which are available. 
in the context of hpc system there are two primary modes of program execution that is interactive mode and batch mode let's see one by one interactive mode is similar to how a personal computer operate it allow user to interact with the system directly however the ability of interactive mode on hpc system may vary based on specific requirement and configuration in interactive mode a user can execute command and program directly typically through a command line interface it enable user to test debug and interactively develop their code or software depending on the system policies interactive mode may need to be enabled or disabled job submitted in interactive mode may still have to wait in a queue if the requested resources are not immediately available the second one is batch mode batch mode refers to program execution in the background where user jobs are submitted and queued for execution based on resource availability key characteristic of batch mode include user submit their computational task or job to the system specifying their resource requirement and other parameter submitted job typically wait in a queue until the adequate resource become available once the requested resource are available the job is scheduled for execution batch mode allow for efficient utilization of computing resource by managing the execution of multiple jobs in a queue manner so now we will learn about what is scheduler type the scheduler type is it important because it determine how jobs are scheduled and resources are allocated on an hpc cluster on an hpc cluster the backfill algorithm is employed to optimize resource utilization by allowing lower priority job to start earlier and utilize ideal slot as long as they can finish before the next high priority job is scheduled to begin the algorithm has maximized the efficiency of the cluster by filling ideal resources with lower priority jobs whenever possible to determine which specific backfill algorithm is implemented on a cluster you can use the following command that is s control so config then pipe then grab scheduler type the output of this command will provide information about the scheduler type or algorithm which is implemented in the cluster so in our param shiva hpc cluster we have implemented backfill algorithm understand how backfill algorithm work <coughs> so let us consider one scenario which provide us to understand the working of the backfill algorithm suppose there are three jobs job 1 job 2 and job 3 which are in running status in the given scenario job 1 Two and three are currently running on an HPC cluster. Now, you will see job four is waiting for job two to finish before it can start. Additionally, job five can start has the opportunity to start on the available resources, but only if it can complete before job two finishes. Let's explore the situation further. Now, job one, two, and three are actively utilizing the available resources on the cluster. and executing their respective task job 4 is waiting in the queue for job 2 to complete as it has a tendency on job 2 before it can start its execution job 4 remains in a waiting state until the required resource from job 2 become available meanwhile job 5 is in the queue and waiting for its turn to start however the backfill algorithm recognize that there are available resources at the moment and job 5 has the potential to start the backfill algorithm check the estimated completion time of job 2 and compare it with the estimated completion time of job 5 if job 5 can finish its execution before job 2 complete the backfill algorithm allocate the available resource to job 5 and allow it to start its execution now job 5 proceed with its with its execution and utilizing the available resource while still being in mindful that the estimated completion time of job 
The job 4 remains in the queue and waiting for job 2 to finish as it has a dependency on job 2 output or resources. If job 5 completes its execution within the estimated time before job 2 finishes, it will finish its execution successfully and release the resources it was using. Once job 2 finishes and release the resources it was utilizing, the backfill algorithm identifies that job 4 dependency has been fulfilled. It then allocates the free resource to job 4 and allow it to start execution. By considering the dependency between jobs and estimating their completion time, the backfill algorithm ensures that job 5 can start on available resource only if it can finish before job 2 complete. This optimization strategy allows for efficient resource utilization while maintaining proper sequence and synchronization between jobs. In summary, job 4 is waiting for job 2 to finish before it can start and job 5 has the opportunity to start on available resource if it can complete its execution before job 2 finishes. The backfill algorithm manages this dependency and optimize resource utilization based on estimated completion time, which ensure efficient job scheduling on an HPC cluster. Now we will see some slum useful command. So slum provides several useful command for managing and monitoring job node, partition and job submission. Let's explore some of the command and their functionality. The first one is sinfo. The command display information about the node partition on the cluster. It provides an overview of the available resource such as number of node, their state and then allocated and the ideal resource with each partition. SQ. By using this command, you can view the job which are currently in the scheduling queue. It provides details about each job including its ID, status, queue position, requested resources, and estimated start time. SLOG. This command allows you to request an interactive job session on the cluster. Interactive session enable you to directly access compute resource and run command in real time. It is similar to using a personal computer. It is useful for testing, debugging, or interactive computation. Spatch. The spatch command is used to submit patch script to slum for job execution. Patch script contain the instruction and command for the job which specify the required resource, runtime and other parameter. Slum schedule and manage the execution of these batch job. S control. The S control command provide comprehensive control and status information about various aspects of slum. It allows you to monitor and manage jobs, nodes, partition, reservation, and other cluster resources. With S control, you can view the status of a specific job or node, modify job property, and perform administrative tasks. S cancel. This command allows you to cancel a previously submitted job. You can specify the job ID or other criteria to identify the job you want to cancel. S cancel terminates the job execution and remove from the scheduling queue. Now see the command sinfo. The sinfo command in slum provides valuable information about the state of partition and nodes managed by the scheduler. It offers various filtering, sorting, and formatting options to customize the output. Let's explore the different states that SNFO can report for node. Here in this image, you are seeing a Param Sivai HPC cluster. So here is the HPC resource node information, what are there. So here you can see there is a standard node, the GPU node, the CPU node, and the HM node. These are the things that are available. Now see what are the type of node and when we, you can use it. In the HPC cluster, there are different type of node with varying capabilities and configuration. Let's explore the different categories of node and their specification. 
The first one is CPU only nodes. These nodes are designed for general purpose computing and do not have any GPUs. They are identified by the node name CN001, 002, and like that. Each CPU only CPU only node has a specific amount of memory per core. The exact memory per core value may vary depending on the cluster configuration. Now nodes with high memory. The no, these nodes are specifically equipped with a high amount of memory per core, making them suitable for memory intensive tasks. They are denoted by the node name HM001, HM002, and so on. These nodes provide more memory capacity per core compared to the CPU only node. Now third is node with GPU, or also called an accelerated node. These nodes are equipped with GPUs which enable accelerated computing for tasks that can benefit from parallel processing on GPU. They are identified by the node name GPU001, GPU002, and so on. These nodes offer GPU resource in addition to CPU core and memory. The differentiation of nodes based on their capabilities allow users to choose the appropriate resource for their specific computational need. CPU-only nodes are suitable for general purpose computing tasks, while high memory nodes are ideal for memory intensive workload. Nodes with GPUs are beneficial for applications that can leverage the power of parallel processing on GPUs to accelerate computation. Understanding the different node categories and their specification, it helps users select the right set of resources to optimize their job performance and achieve efficient utilization of the HPC cluster. In summary, the HPC cluster consists of CPU only node with memory per core node with high memory and node with GPUs. Each category of node offer distinct capability and specification which catering to different computational requirements and enable user to choose the appropriate resource for the specific workload. Now see some slum command. In slum, Two important commands for job submission and resource allocation are sbatch and salloc. Let's explore their functionality. sbatch. The sbatch command is used to submit a job script for later execution within Slim system. A job script is typically a text file which contains a series of command and instruction which have to be executed. The script may include one or more srun command to launch parallel tasks or perform a specific action. When using sbatch, you can specify the job script as an argument and slum schedule and execute the job at an appropriate time based on available resources and scheduling policy. For example, if I write sbatch my sample script and submit the my sample script job script for execution. Now salloc command. The salloc command it allow you to allocate resource in real time for immediate job execution. It is particularly useful for interactive job session or when you need to reserve resource for a specific duration. With salloc, you can specify various options such as requested time, partition, and number of node to allocate. For example, salloc time is equal to one, partition is equal to GPU. And node is equal to one. It means that we are requesting a one hour allocation on the GPU partition for one node. Once the allocation is granted, you can interactively run command or launch job within the allocated resources. Now we see the S run command. In slum, the S run command is used to submit a job for execution or initiate job steps in real time. It provides flexibility in launching both sequential and parallel job with various resource configuration. Let's explore some example of how SRM can be used. The first one is sequential job, that is with single CPU on one node. To submit a sequential job that utilizes one CPU on a single node, you can use the following command like srun-pty and then slash bash.
This command initiate a bash shell session and execute command sequentially and utilizing the resource of a single CPU on one node. If I want the parallel job with shared memory, there is multiple CPUs on one node. If you have a parallel job that requires multiple CPU on a single node, you can use the following command that is srun node equal to 1, task per node is equal to 1, CPU per task is equal to n, iPhone iPhone PTY, then slash pass. Here, replace n with the desired number of CPUs. This command initiate a bash shell session with parallel execution where each task utilizes one CPU on a single node. If I want parallel job with distributed memory, that is multiple CPUs on multiple nodes. For a parallel job that requires distributed memory across multiple nodes, you can use following command. That is S run, n task per node is equal to n, nodes is equal to m, CPU per task is equal to 1, hyphen hyphen pt bash. Here replace n with the desired number of tasks per node and m with the number of nodes. This command initiate a bash cell session with parallel execution where each task utilizes one CPU on each of the specified number of nodes. Additionally, you can specify other options with SRAN to customize job execution, such as time limit, memory requirement, GPU resources, etc. Now, here are some of the examples I listed below. Interactive job with time limit and resource allocation, like SRAN node equal to n, n task per node is equal to 1, time m is allocated 1 hour, hyphen hyphen pty bash hyphen i hyphen i use for interactive session. This command initiate an interactive bash shell session with a time limit of 1 hour on one node, where the session can be used for interactive work or executing command. Now job with time limit memory and GPU resource allocation. If we want to allocate a GPU, how we can do this? S run then we have given time is 1 hour 30 minute then we have given a specified memory that is we want a 3000 MB of memory and then press GPU colon 1 hyphen and pt slash bin slash bash. So this command submit a job that has a time limit of 1 hour 30 minutes and require 300 MB of memory and request one GPU resource for execution. So here you are seeing multiple options in slum like hyphen node hyphen n task we have discussed it earlier you can see more further now here in this slide you are seeing a sample slum script so the slum script must be start with hash escalatory mark slash bin slash bash it is at the beginning of the script and it is specified and it should be interpreted that it is using a bash shell. The line starting with has s batch are slum directive. These directive provide instruction to slum on how to allocate resources and manage the job. The has s batch hyphen node is equal to one. It means that it is specified that the job should be allocated on one node. Then has s batch and task per node equal to one. It indicates that the job should have one task per node. Then there is a batch time is equal to five minutes. It set the time limit for job to be five minutes. And the time limit will be given in our minute and second. Then S batch hyphen partition. It is specify the partition to which the job should be submitted. In this case, the partition name is CPU. Then s batch hyphen o percent j dot out and s batch hyphen e percent j dot error. It set the file name for the job standard output and standard error respectively. The percent j placeholder is replaced by the job ID when the job is submitted. The line s run host name execute the host name command using the s run command. This command will be executed on the allocated resource that is and it will print the host name of the node. The line srun if we given echo dollar slum underscore job id 
it print the slum job id using the uco command the dollar slum job id variable is provided by slum and it represent the unique id which is assigned to the job now you see how to run a sample script to send your job for scheduling you need to use the sbatch command followed by the name of your job script like this sbatch sample dot sh this command instruct the scheduler to take the content of the sample dot sh script and execute it as a job on the computing cluster once you execute the sbatch command you will receive feedback in the terminal the scheduler will respond with a message such as job submitted that is job submitted by job 35298 the number 35298 represent the unique identifier assigned to your submitted job this message confirm that your job has been successfully sent to the scheduler for execution at the same time the scheduler initiate the job execution process and generate two file associated with your job that is job id dot error and job id dot out the job id dot error this file is known as standard error file it capture any error messages warning or exceptional event that occur during the execution of your job if there are any issue or unexpected occurrence during the run time of your job they will be recorded in this file and which review the content of this file you, you can diagnose and address any problem that may have occurred the job id dot out this file is referred to as the standard output file it is stored the regular output which is generated by your job this include any print statement log messages or the textual output produced by your script during its execution the content of this file provide a record of normal operation and progress of your job it can be helpful for debugging purposes or reviewing the result produced by your script by examining the information in the standard error and the standard out file you can gain insight into the execution of your job and identify any error or the issue encountered and review the output which is produced by your script now we will see a slum job script for a serial job for running your job serially the hyphen nodes is equal to 1 you have to specify then the end task per node is equal to 1 you have to specify that the number of cpu core per node since this is a serial job we have to allocate only one core and rest you can see it is same then running an mpi job if you want to run an mpi job so here i have taken number of node is equal to 2 it is specified that the job should run on two node you can adjust this value as per your requirement here i have given n task per node is equal to 2 it means that it is specified that the number of mpi processes to be launched on each node in this example it is set 2 then i have given a time for 1 hour so the maximum duration of the job is 1 hour you can adjust this value as per your requirement then i have given job name Your job name is MP underscore hello. It set the name of the job. You can customize it as needed. Then error file job percent j dot error. Here you can specify the name of the error file where any error out will be redirected. Similarly, job percent j dot out. It is specify the name of the output file where the program output will be redirected. In this partition, who you have to specify your partition. Here we have specify standard. which is specify the type of resource partition which you have to use you can customize it based on your cluster setup then you have to load a module so here i have loaded intel one api mpi which is default mpi module you can use this according to your cluster specification then i have given mpi run hyphen np then slum underscore and task then i have executed dot slash hello dot mpi it is the command to run your mpi program replace the dot slash hello dot mpi with an appropriate command which you have to execute your uh, uh, by you throughput 
Throughout this module, you have learned how to write pass script to automate job submission, configure job parameter, handle input output, and utilize slum feature for efficient resource allocation and management. By combining the power of bash scripting and slum, you can streamline your job submission process, enhance productivity, and maximize the utilization of computing resources on your cluster. Now we will see some slum command. So the first command is s cancel. Cancel a specific job. You can use this command. First is s cancel job id replace your job id with the id of the job you want to cancel this command terminate the specified job and free up the allocated resource if you want to cancel for a specific user if you want to cancel all jobs submitted by a particular user you can use this command s cancel hyphen u username replace your username with the username of the user whose job you want to cancel this command cancel all the job associated with the specific user. Then cancel pending job for a specific user. If you want to cancel only the pending job for a specific user, you can use this command s cancel hyphen t pending then hyphen u your username. This command specifically cancel the pending job for the specified user, ensuring that only the job in the pending state are terminated now cancel job with a specific name if you have job with a specific name and you want to cancel them you can use the following command s cancel hyphen name your job name replace my job name with the name of the job or job pattern you want to cancel this command cancel all job with a specified name or pattern Now see sq command. So when you execute the sq command, it retrieves and present a list of jobs or job steps that are currently in the scheduling queue. The output include important details about each job, such as its job ID, state, priority, queue position, requested resources, and estimated start time. This job in the scheduling queue are categorized as either running pending running jobs are actively being executed on allocated resources while pending jobs are waiting for available resources to become free before they can start running here you can see cpu gpu and standard partition for the job are running with the status r and some jobs are in pending status with the status as pd now the s control command the s control command in slug provide a comprehensive set of functionalities for retrieving detailed information about various aspects of the system and making configuration changes it is a versatile tool that is commonly used by both user and system administrator let's explore its capabilities the first one is s control so partition so this command allow you to retrieve detailed information about the partition defined in the slum system it provide insight into partition properties such as partition name node associated with that partition access control policy and resource limit this information help user to understand the available partition and their characteristic when submitting the jobs then the second one came s control so node and your node name by using this command you can obtain detailed information about a specific node in the slum system it provides a wealth of information about the node including its state cpu and memory resources features associated partition and any other job related information this command is useful for examining the status and properties of individual node in their cluster then s control show job your job id with this command, you can retrieve detailed information about a specific job identified by its job ID. It provides extensive detail about the job, including its state, resource allocation, start time, end time, requested and allocated resources, and associated job step. This command 
helps users to track the progress of their job and obtain information about their resource utilization. Then the fourth command came as control so reg. It this command allow you to retrieve information about resource in the slum system. It provides details about defined resources, their characteristic availability and allocation status. This information is valuable for monitoring and managing resource utilization within the cluster. Then S control create res. It requires root access. So this command is used by the system admin to create a defined new resource within the slum. It provides a means to customize and configure additional resources that can be utilized by jobs and users in the system. However, note that this command requires root access to execute. Here, this is what I have shown you one example that is a S control so node CN001. So we have seen in CN001 what is the total CPU that is 48, what is the um, threads per core is there, and multiple things you can know in the node. Then in this slide, we see what are the slum job status. The first one is allocated. So this state indicates that the node has been assigned and is currently being allocated by one or more job. The allocated resources are actively executing tasks. The second one is ideal. Node in the ideal state are not currently allocated to any jobs and are available for use. These nodes are ready to accept new job allocation and have unused computing resources. The third one is down. When a node is reported as down, it means that the node is currently unavailable for use. This could due to maintenance, hardware issue, or other reason that prevent the node from participating in the cluster. Then there is a mixed. Mixed nodes in the mixed state have a combination of allocated and ideal CPUs. Some CPUs on the node are actively executing the task for allocated job while others remain ideal when available for new job allocation. Then the last one is reserved. Node in the reserve state are part of an advanced reservation. These nodes are dedicated to a specific reservation and are not generally available for regular job scheduling. Reservation allow for pre-booking resources for a specific time period or for a specific user. Then here you can see slum job status code. So when using slum, Job or job states steps can have different status code that indicate their current status within the system. This status code provides valuable information about the progress and outcome of a job. Let's explore the various job status code and their meaning. The first one is completed, that is CD. This status indicates that the job or job step has come successfully finished and executed all of its tasks. The job has reached its completion point and has terminated without any error. Then CG, that is completing. When a job is in the completing state, it means that it is in the final stage of execution and is in process of wrapping up task. This job is in final steps before transition into a completed steps. Then Failed. The failed status indicate that the job or job step encountered an error or failure during execution. This could be due to various reasons such as program error, resource issue, or external factor. Failed job require investigation to determine the cause of the failure. Then here came pending, that is PD. Jobs in the pending state are waiting in the scheduling queue for available resources to become free. These jobs have not yet started executing and are waiting for their turn to for resource allocation. Then came preempted, that is PR. When a job is in preempted, it means that it was interrupted or forcefully stopped by the scheduler to make room for a high priority job. Preemption occur when a high priority job 
needs resources that are currently allocated to a lower priority job. Then running R. The running status indicates that the job or job step is currently executing on allocated resource. The tasks of the job are actively running and utilizing the assigned computing resource. Then suspended, that is S. Job in the suspended state are temporarily paused or halted. This can happen if a user manually suspend a job or if the system encounters certain condition that requires suspending the job temporarily. Then stop, ST. When a job in the is in the stop state, it means that the job has been explicitly stopped or terminated by a user or administrator. The job will not continue execution and it's considered to be in a stopped state. Let's see some slug job reason code. In slum, there are several factors and conditions that can affect job scheduling and execution. Let's explore some of these factors and their implication. The first one is priority. Priority refers to the relative importance or urgency assigned to a job. Jobs with higher priority have a great chance of being allocated resources and start execution earlier. Priority is determined based on various factors such as fair share uses, requested resources, and scheduling policy defined in the slum configuration. The second one is dependency. Dependency refers to the relationship between jobs where the execution of one job depends on the successful completion of another job. Job can be set to start only after a specified dependency are satisfied. This ensures proper sequencing and coordination of tasks that rely on the output or resources of other jobs. The third one is the resource. Job require a specific resource such as CPU core, memory, GPU, or other specialized hardware to execute successful. Slum allow user to specify their resource requirement in the job submission, ensuring that the necessary resources are available and allocated for job execution. Then invalid account. Slum uses an account-based system to track resource uses and enforce allocation policies. If a job is submitted with an invalid or unauthorized account, it will be rejected and not scheduling for execution. This ensures that only valid and authorized user or account can utilize the resource of the SPC cluster. Then QoS group max job limit. Then the QoS that is quality of service group provide a way to define a specific limit and constraint on job scheduling and resource uses. QoS group max job limit refer that the maximum number of jobs that can be submitted or executed within a particular QoS or group. This limit ensures that fair resource allocation and prevent any single group from monitoring the resources. Sorry, it is monopolizing, monopolizing the resources. Requested node not available. Sometimes job submission may specify a specific node requirement or feature request. If the requested node or features are not available at the time of job scheduling, the job may receive a request node not available status. This indicates that the required node or feature are currently unavailable and the job will remain pending until the resource becomes available. Now, whatever we have learned, so we execute some slum command and write one script, one for CPU and one for GPU. Now it's a demo time. Thank you.